So Sony is being sued for roughly $7.9 billion. That equates to roughly about 5 billion pounds here in the UK. But there is a lot of money being exchanged here. Romania has now got involved. A few other countries are now inquiring to see if they can get involved. The slice of that pie is getting bigger and bigger. And don't forget the $7.9 billion is for the UK. This, you know, if Romania wants to get involved, this could potentially be additional suing on top of that because it's independent. What's happening here is independent to their own region. So essentially, Sony has been restricting and fixing prices, charging consumers more. And we know that the digital codes part here has a big factor to play, unlike Microsoft, Epic, uh, Google, Apple, Amazon, who offer digital codes externally through you know, other mediums, Sony do not. And as such, they dictate what the prices are, how they are, and can control everything they need to do. Now, as we can see here on the actual screen, you can see that Sony is preventing Epic Games from passing on savings to PlayStation customers. Now, this is one of the things that the CMA is basically pushing on. So Sony is gonna Sony is in big trouble here. The fact that the CMA is now really going for them is, you know, we've seen what the CMA can do with the Microsoft and uh, Activision Blizzard. They, did, they didn't they did relent until they got what they wanted. And I, I suspect that's going to be the same here. And as you can see here, Sony reportedly preventing Epic Games from passing savings on to customers. Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney claims that Sony has prevented the company from passing savings on to customers in popular games like Fortnite. Now, this came out from the Google and Epic uh, case, but is likely going to be used in the trial when Sony go to court and try to defend themselves. This lawsuit is going to be really interesting. I think it's going to be one that's going to be closely... Well, I hope people are closely following it, people have interest, because I'm definitely... if. You know, it is going to be made public. We'll be following it and we'll be uh, reporting on it because, as you know, with the ABK and Microsoft case, I really enjoy this stuff. So hopefully this will be right up your street. But we can also see down here where, I mean, PlayStation tax has already come into it. They were all laughing at Xbox tax. Now they're doing the PlayStation tax. This is just too funny. But you can see over here that the indie devs were being screwed over as well. Somewhat related to communications problems is the separate issue of discounts. Again, this is something that because Sony dictated and they're the only ones that can control it, they have been kind of abusing that power. As Garner pointed out in his thread, discounts on platform X are invite only and also very limited. Other publishers I spoke to, again referring specifically to Sony, and by X here they were referring to Sony, confirmed that Sony is notoriously stingy with who it allows to hold discounts on its platform and when. By the way, I am using a new mic, a new camera, we just upgraded, so do let me know in the comment section below what you think. Is it good? Is it bad? Do I come out clearer? Love to hear your thoughts. Multiple people spoke to confirm this to be the case, saying that publishers can only run discounts when explicitly invited by Sony. Matthew White, CEO of Whitehorn Digital, told me that PlayStation sets the discount with publishers able to agree or make a counter offer, but timing and rate are ultimately dictated by the platform. So you can make a counter offer, but if Sony's decided that this is basically it, you can either accept that discount or jog on. You almost never get invited either, he said. Say maybe two times a year. So Sony pretty much cherry picks who's being nice to them in order to basically give them the opportunity to make more money. They are basically a tyrant at this point who has garnered so much power that they feel like they are in a position where they can do anything they want. And this lawsuit that's happening right now with the whole 30%, with the whole digital codes, issues like these are going to be relevant. Issues like this are only going against what Sony is doing. It's crazy. And, you know, this is going to be very interesting to see how this actually develops. Now, as we know, $7.9 billion is a lot of money, pretty much the money that Microsoft paid to buy the whole publisher ZeniMax. So it's not a small pocket change. It's actually a decent amount. But, you know, 
Sony has been abusing this right for a while. And what Epic uh, Games is saying here is, you know, on PC, games generally, you know, the V-Bucks generally sell for cheaper. But because of the MFN, they can't actually pass that saving on to the consumer. Because if they do, then it's going to be cheaper for consumers to go to the PC version, get it there, and Sony would lose out. And Sony can't lose out. Do you remember the whole crossplay tax that Sony put in place where if they don't sell enough units and if they don't make enough money and other, you know, if they don't have that margin, then the publisher actually has to turn around and cover that shortfall. This is exploiting, right? Because they are the market leader, because they have such a huge market presence, they are using that power to completely and utterly dictate what goes on and essentially are fleecing publishers and the consumers. This is going to be a really interesting case. I really hope it does go to trial because I'm really excited to see how this actually develops. And honestly, if Sony does get fined $7.9 billion uh, equivalent, I think it's about 5 billion pounds in the UK, that's going to hit them really hard. And don't forget, Sony had to go to Klarna to get a free payment plan going in order to just pay off Bungie. So they couldn't even afford a 3.6 billion payout. They had to pay in free installments, probably the biggest waste of money they've made in the past. Actually, that's debatable. You do have the portal, although the portal is actually selling, right? So no matter how bad or pointless that device is, it's still selling, unlike what Bungie is doing where no one's buying their latest DLC. So... All Bungie's done really is turned around and tried to get factions cancelled because it probably was better than Destiny 2. At least that's where I'm standing on it right now because everything Bungie has done so far has turned to shit. But, you know, it's going to be interesting. Hopefully we'll get to see more of what's going to happen. Hopefully we'll get live updates on the actual court case. Maybe even Florian might actually decide to cover this and... That will make life a little easier, especially if they're actually going to uh, provide uh, tweet updates like they were before and Twitter spaces. That will definitely make it easier for me to be able to gather that information and bring it to a video. But otherwise, if they're not, if the court case is in the UK, uh, which it should be, and it's going to be publicly tele you know, on the internet, then I can at least go there, listen in, and provide you all with that information. But as of right now, this is bad. This is really bad. All of this information coming from indie developers, coming from Epi, you know the Google and Epic trial, is going to go against them. It's going to go against them big time. Now Google is saying you know that the whole Sony thing with Epic is a bit sus because Sony owns some shares in Epic, but at the end of the day, just because they own some shares doesn't mean they own a fifty-one percent controlling right of the shares, and as such it doesn't really mean anything in the grand scheme of things. It's just Google being Google, but it is what it is. It's going to be interesting and roll on the court case because, uh, things seem to be going from bad to worse for Sony. Sure. They may have the whole media behind them. They may have the popularity aspect, which is basically making anything that Xbox does become a clickbait. But at the same time, you know, when you've got giants like the CMA who are annoying, who are frustrating, and who can damn right ruin your day, like we saw with uh, the whole blocking in April of the ABK deal, and how, you know, we had a Dreamcast guy going, the Activision Blizzard deal is blocked. It's done. It's finished. And then he started crying because it actually went through. But, you know, it is what it is. And... Yeah, it's going to be one hell of a trial if it does go. I think Sony's going to try and uh, settle this out of court. I think they're going to go to the CMA and say, look, we get what we've done. We know what the problem is. We Tell us what we need to do to fix it. We will provide you with an update remedy, with a proposal, and we will go from there. I think that's going to be the course of action that Sony wants to go down. But if they don't and they really think that they can take this to court and actually win, good luck to them. And, you know, made a victor come on, on top. But good Lord, they it, it, it's starting to look really sour for Sony. Sure, they're still selling consoles through the bucket. I mean, 
at this point, <laughs> they're becoming the Nintendo. How many consoles can one person own? But at the same time, people are buying them. And we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes because uh, that 7.9 billion, if they are found guilty, is going to leave a big hole. A really, really big hole. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you found this video useful, do consider leaving a like, subscribe. Let's see if we can hit that 350 likes. That's the challenge. If you enjoyed this video or are looking forward to the case, do consider leaving a sub. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does help the channel grow. If you want to support me further, you can do that through my Patreon, YouTube members, and of course, through Super Thanks. Right, that's the video. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one. Remain legend.